Thank you very much, uh, President Markula, dear Marku, Professor Rifkin, dear Jeremy, Vice Prime Minister of Luxembourg, dear, dear Etienne, Honorable Mayors, uh, local leaders, uh, Director General of DG Regio, uh, dear Mark. I think it's really a, a pleasure uh, to be here and to see uh, many of you at this uh, uh, conference, which has very good title, because it brings both the objective and the means uh, in its title. Investing in Europe and building a coalition of smart uh, cities and region. And I think it's uh, a very timely, uh, it's very well chosen topic, and I would like to thank uh, President Markula and the Committee of Regions for the leadership on this issue, because we are working on this file together, and we see how much can be accomplished in a very short period of time. We have a feeling that the summit in Bratislava was just a day ago, and since then, <laughs> Really, a lot of things happen, and we see this positive energy coming from you, from the local leaders, from the local mayors, and which motivates us and pushes, uh, pushes us forward. And I want to thank Jeremy, because he's not only an excellent speaker, but he's a source of inspiration for many of us. And, and I think that I'm glad to say that in Europe, a lot of, of our uh, policies are reflecting some of his ideas and uh, some of uh, his approaches, how to make sure that Europe would uh, be the leading continent uh, in uh, energizing and, and modernizing our uh, economy and our way of uh, living. I'm sure that if you look across uh, this room that uh, uh, we will find uh, a lot of colleagues and friends uh, who have something very important in common. And that's a strong belief in the ability of local action to transform our economies and to bring about the change. And with your conviction, ambition, I'm sure that we can foster change uh, all across the Europe, and I would even say around the world. As you know, and President Markula was referring to this. We just reconfirmed this uh, conviction in our state, uh, second state of the Energy Union report, which I presented uh, the last week. Because we realized that the cities face enormous challenges, from air pollution and traffic congestion to the lack of affordable housing. And at the same time, the cities are the real centers of innovation and growth. They are engines of uh, economic uh, development, and therefore, I believe that uh, we have to realize uh, that the cities are increasingly part uh, of the solution. And this was the quote from the State of the Energy Union report, which is reflecting the new roles for local leaders and cities which uh, we see in this uh, new type of uh, uh, cooperation. And if you look uh, uh, at uh, the cities and uh, the regions as strong drivers of uh, economic modernization, we always have to remember a few very important uh, figures. After all, the cities in Europe produce 68% of the GDP. They are responsible for a quarter of all public expenditure and almost half of public investment. And if these investments are done in a smart way, as Jeremy just uh, uh, described, uh, and if our cities invest in the future-proof technologies and infrastructure, then this is where the modernization of Europe's economy starts. Another central message in the second state of the energy union is that for the European Commission, 2017 would be the year of the implementation indeed. Not only here in Brussels, where we have to make sure that all the proposals we put on the table last year would be approved by the European Parliament and by the Council, but especially at uh, the local level. And if you allow me, I'll just provide you with some of the examples. First of all, we have to implement the EU urban agenda. I know that some of you sitting here were involved in the hard work of my colleague, Commissioner Corina Cretu, on this and uh, that the urban partnership when launched <laughs> last year, and they are excellent example of uh, cooperation across the decision-making levels, local, national, European. Several of these uh, partnerships are up and running or are about to be set up, and they affect uh, very important uh, areas, such as air pollution, poverty, housing, migration and refugees, circular economy, digital transition, urban mobility, jobs and skills, energy, and climate action. And in all these areas, cities are taking concrete action by banning diesel cars from the city centers, by renovating buildings, making them more energy efficient, and turning them into micropower plants, as Jeremy just uh, uh, described. And I'm sure uh, that we will see more of that thanks to all the new proposals we put on the table 
uh, in the form of uh, smart financing for smart building support which we want to offer the mayors to start this uh, energy efficiency uh, wave across the European Union. The cities are doing their uh, utmost uh, to contribute uh, to uh, the modernization of our economy by promoting renewable uh, energy, for instance, by innovative crowdfunding schemes, by addressing energy poverty through investment uh, in energy efficient social housing, and by serving as a living laboratories where disruptive and innovative uh, technologies can develop through the strong engagement in innovation clusters. And also by working with educational and vocational training centers, preparing for the skills of the future. As you can imagine, I could continue this list all day, citing examples from practically everywhere in Europe, and in some places they even do all this simultaneously. Not in the silo approach, but in a holistic approach. And I'm sure that the Mayor Abu Taleb of Rotterdam and President Xavier Bertrand and also Vice Prime Minister Schneider will go deeper uh, in this in the presentation. A second example on how the European Commission can help you realize your ambition relates uh, uh, to the one-stop shop that we launched in October and is now becoming entirely operational. And I would like to mention this instrument once again because I feel that uh, many local leaders haven't yet discovered it. So please go to our website, check it out. It's there for you and I believe it could be very, very useful. Uh, the One Stop Shop is a result of a joint effort of not less than 15 commission services working together often for the first time. It brings together all information that matters for the cities, notably on three areas. First, city-related European legislative initiatives and strategies. Indeed, as our last legislative proposal illustrates, we do not want to forget the local dimension. Take example of the energy. The new energy markets are becoming more and more decentralized. And this trend will well reflect, is well reflected in our proposals on redesign of the electricity market, on a revised uh, renewable directive, or if you look uh, at mobility, <coughs> when we presented our long-term vision on the future collaborative low emission mobility, uh, where we included uh, several uh, references uh, to the urban mobility as well, and you will see the materialize in uh, the packages which uh, we are preparing in this respect uh, for this year and for the beginning of the next year. Second, the one-stop shop includes all city-related uh, support initiative of awards, such as Green Capital Awards, but many others, and I think it's simply good for the overall orientation, what the cities uh, do together and how they can collaborate and cooperate. And finally, in the one-stop shop, we put together all financing uh, instruments that could help cities become smarter and more sustainable. These include Horizon 2020 the structural funds or the Juncker investment plan, which we recently extended. And at the same time, the one-stop shop will also guide you towards advice in preparing projects along with the studies, databases, and concrete uh, project examples. Let me express the importance of the letter point on the concrete project examples. I meet a large number of mayors or local leaders who really want to take action to smarten their cities or regions. But all too often, they do not uh, really know what to do or how to do it. And let's make sure that they don't have to reinvent the wheel, but can learn from existing best practices. That's what uh, today's conference is all about. That's also what I plan to do all throughout my second energy union tour, which I just uh, started uh, uh, in Netherlands, because I would like to visit pioneering projects at the local level. I would like to highlight them, showcase them, and to make sure that others could also benefit from them. And the third and the final example of action I would like to mention here is the cooperation on the global level. Best practices should not stop at Europe's border. They should go global. A good instrument to make this happen is the Global Covenant of Mayors, which should become fully operational in the course of this year. Such a single global coalition of cities is important for a range of reasons, but I will mention only one. The fact that also at the global level, cities and regions can inspire each other and learn from each other's best practices. In other words, our cities can team up with the cities in other continents to jump over fossil age. 
And I can tell you that especially over the last few weeks, uh, we are receiving a lot of phone calls, a lot of requests for very concrete cooperation, be it in Africa, be it in some Asi Asian countries who see the Europe as an anchor of stability, as a guarantor of future development assistance, as a, as a, as a uh, continent which is ready to share our knowledge in a clean tech, green tech, and is uh, ready to help them despite this global uh, developments to continue in uh, the developments. And I promise them we are ready to do it because we know how important it is for your local developments but also for fighting the, the climate change. And I think we as a Europeans should be proud of it that now we are the first address for all of them to learn from us and to work with the technologies which we developed in Europe and proved that they work, that you can grow economically and you can cut your greenhouse gas emissions drastically. So you can see a lot is already happening and uh, it's true also when we are talking about the investment. I'm very glad that Mark uh, Lemaitre is with us. He will elaborate uh, on this in the greater detail. But I just would like to make one, I would say, important uh, um, uh, highlight and that would be that if it comes to the investment, the size matter. It's not only a matter of bringing investment tools together, it's also a matter of bringing good projects together through cooperation between the cities within one country or even cross-border. This kind of aggregation of projects is definitely something I would like to explore further during my energy union tour and in my conversations with the financial institution and institutional investors. We have few good examples what a well-established investment platform could do. We have seen it in France, in Paris region, we have seen it in Denmark, and I'm convinced that we need solid investment platform in all our member states to make sure that they can aggregate the project, they can provide the advice, they can work closely with such a big bank like the EIB to channel the investment in the smart ways and to support the smart project. So ladies and gentlemen, as uh, uh, Jeremy was concluding his remarks by highlighting the fact that uh, Europe was always driven by big ideas, great projects which captured the imagination of uh, our uh, peoples of uh, Europe. It was peace, it was uh, the coal and steel community, it was a single market, introduction of our common currency. And I believe that energizing and modernizing Europe to further uh, develop our position as a first mover in this very important uh, economic transformation. The showcasing of our pioneering uh, effort to build the top class, fair, inclusive, smart Europe could be really the next journey of Europe. And I would say it very much uh, depends on us. So therefore I'm very glad that uh, we are going to discuss all these uh, topics here today with all your participations, with uh, excellent speakers, and I really would like to thank once again President Markula for convening us together. Thank you very much.